One of the problems we have when running awards is, is, is actually trying to um, fit projects into categories. And in true experimental style, we've decided to make a new one this year. Uh, we've called it Community Commendation, because there, there was a particular project that was entered this year we, th we felt deserved some recognition, and um, we, we wanted to find a way to create that. So um, as recommended by our advisory board, we have created this new thing called Community Commendation. Um, just to sort of set the context of the kinds of things we were looking at, um, these were not actually entered, but they're more sort of a historical context. A few years ago, um, Morris Nicholson, um, um, I think he's in the audience, he is, yes, um, retired pharmacist from Boots, if you don't want me ask, uh, saying that, um, um, Morris um, um, helped geotag, I think, I don't know, thousands and thousands of maps within our collection that we found in digitized books and others. Um, but this sort of gives a flavor of the kinds of things we wanted to recognize. Um, this is a project by Keith Gregson, a historian author, um, who used our newspaper archive to look at the social history of his hometown Sunderland, and particularly Sunderland Rugby Club. And uh, he's also published a few books. Uh, this is a project called The History of Refley Spring, The Pleasures of Refley Spring by Spring um, by Andrew Clapham. Again, sort of a, a personal project. A person, um, they did that in their own time, and they used our newspaper archive and created a website on the history of um, their local spring. Uh, this is Netley Abbey Matters by Brenda Findlay. Uh, again, um, she created this independently uh, using uh, research from our newspaper archives. But um, that's kind of historical. Um, some of you may have seen those entries from a few years ago. But um, we wanted to give a, um, a sort of a special recognition for uh, this um, award, which is, uh, sorry, this, this entry, which is um, by Leslie Phillips, um, who created um, a volume um, of um, a detailed accounts of the plays and players working in East Midlands theatre circuit, circuit between 1843 and 1855. Um, especially with notes on the background of the manager, John Fawcett Savile. Um, the research uh, depended heavily on, uh, sorry, heavily, not heavenly, uh, hev heavily on the use of online British Library playbills collection and also the newspaper archive. Um, she used transcriptions of playbills and newspaper articles to illustrate the work, um, which has really contributed to the knowledge th of theatre history in, in the East Midlands. So I'd like to... Um, uh, invite Leslie up to the stage to talk a little bit about her project. Thank you very much, Mahendra. Well, as Mahendra said, I, um, I'll just uh, explain that my project was to study the history of the East Midlands theatrical circuit. And as, as he said, it's resulted in a volume on giving a detailed account of the life and work of one of the managers. I'd, if you see, the East Midlands circuit goes as far as Doncaster and down to Stamford. It covers quite a wide area. <laughs> I believe my work has helped to shine a light on one aspect of the lives of ordinary people in the East Midlands, including the way national events impacted on their lives, and I hope will prove to be a useful resource to other researchers in the future. I'll just say a few uh, words on how I came to do this uh, research. Um, some years ago, I was working in Chesterfield Library as a local studies librarian. And a frequent inquiry was, why is a small yard near the library called Theatre Yard when the theatre is on the other side of the town? At the time, I was able to uh, tell people that the library was actually built on the site of Chesterfield's Georgian Theatre, but I didn't know much more about it. Uh, but in 2006... Uh, the, uh, I was fortunate enough to be awarded a bursary by a combination of the British Library, Libraries and Information East Midlands, and the East Midlands branch of SILIP, which enabled me to come and visit the British Library and do some more research on the subject. This bursary was awarded with the aim of raising awareness of the relevance of the British Library's resources to the East Midlands, and in my case, specifically to Chesterfield. So, of course, for my project, I chose to investigate the history of that long-departed Georgian theatre in Chesterfield. And uh, so here I am, numerous articles, talks and library displays later, now retired, 
but still very much hooked on investigating theatre history. And I've extended my interest, as you can see now, to encompass the whole of the East Midlands circuit. The digitisation of newspapers, books and playbills over recent years has really opened up a world of opportunity in, and inspiration for individual researchers like me. Yes, I've had to travel around the country to visit archives, but the vast quantity of British Library newspapers now digitised has been immensely useful in saving time and solving quite a few mysteries. And for my particular project, the data sets of playbills, once my son had unzipped them for me, because I don't know how to do that, has proved an immensely rich source of information on many theatres, from Dublin to Edinburgh. And those old comedians really did get about. So it's all part of the wonderful national collection held at the British Library that's now available to you wherever you live. So I owe British Library Labs many thanks for allowing me, even though I live 130 miles away from London, to access some of the British Library's wonderful collections and to feed what has become something of an obsession. An obsession which has seen me travel to Wolverhampton, Manchester and Norwich and even seen me in a cemetery in Nottingham, pulling ivy off a monument with my bare hands. I feel very grateful and honoured to have received this community commendation. Thank you.